Hello, and welcome back to another edition of Maddie's Rap, the show where we rap about things that guys rap about. This is another filterless Freestyle Friday edition. Um, and you might want to rap, you might want to get your favorite snack and sit down for this one, your favorite drink, whatever that might be, and sit down for this one. Because this one is going to be a little bit long today. Um, and maybe by my saying it's going to be a little bit long, maybe I have the, res the, the reverse effect. Because typically, I'll say that this is going to be a quick one, and it ends up being not so quick. So, uh, you know what, strap, strap in your seatbelt, grab your favorite drink, your favorite snack, slice a pizza, whatever you're going to do. You're watching this at nighttime, uh, coffee if you're watching this in the morning. But this one, I'm going to put a little bit of time on, okay? Why marriage? is a joke oh wait a minute matt wait a minute i i know what you're thinking i know what you're thinking you're like didn't you just celebrate your 27th wedding anniversary a week ago or two what's today the 18th two weeks ago i did i did so that may come to you uh, that may come as a shock to you that i have just sat here and told you guys that i think that marriage is a joke now, is marriage in and of itself a joke? Uh, let me let me get a little tighter in on this shot. Is marriage in and of itself a joke? No. But marriage as practiced here in the West, when I say the West, I'm not talking about the West Coast. I'm talking about the Western Hemisphere. I'm talking about Western culture. I'm talking about not Eastern culture. Marriage is practiced in the West. It's a joke, all right? So today, I'm gonna to get into some reasons why marriage is a joke and then we're going to wrap up by saying well what can we do about it well, what can we fix it I, I mean how can we fix it what can we do to fix it is what i meant to say are you guys are always like well matt you know you're a problem solver you you talk about how everything you've ever done in your life career-wise has been about uh, solving problems so uh if marriage is such a joke matt what are we going to do to fix this we're going to talk about that toward the end of this video but before i do that i want to Welcome you back if you're a, a returning subscriber. Thank you so much. All right, because I don't have any sound effects, so I had to give it to you. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming back. I appreciate you guys supporting my work as an artist. That you guys know I'm a writer as well as a blogger, as well as you know a YouTuber, and uh, I tend to talk about some controversial topics. So I appreciate you guys being being returning subscribers. Okay, now if you're new to my channel please consider hitting the uh, subscribe button. And uh, if you're gonna do that, you might as well hit the notification bell and slide it up to all. So therefore, uh, so that way you're notified when I drop some new content. Why is that important? That's important because if your YouTube feed is like mine, you're always getting a ton of recommended videos that are not necessarily from channels that you subscribe to. So if you're getting videos uh, recommended that you don't subscribe to, you might as well subscribe so that the ones that you subscribe to are pushed up toward the top of the queue. Now, I'm gonna grab a drink of this uh, nice lemon water. We'll keep the body alkalized. Uh, anyway, let me keep this thing moving. I gotta keep the the, uh, the voice hydrated. And again, I want you guys to know that this is this is uh, this is controversial material. Now, I've been talking for a few minutes. Let me jump right in. Five reasons why marriage, as practiced in the West, is a joke. All right. And then after that, I'll wrap up with some things that we can do to address that and maybe change that narrative. Because everything's about narrative, everything. Now, what's the number one reason why marriage is... Why, Matt, why did you say marriage is a joke? You're, you've been married for 27 years. Why did you say it's a joke? Number one reason, it's a gigantic spell. That's right, it's a gigantic spell. What do you mean by that, Matt? Well, you know that English has been coined as the language of spells. We know that, right? I mean, um, it's a language full of abstract principles. And so if you want to cast a spell on somebody, just get them thinking about what is it that you mean? What is he trying to say? What it, what exactly are you talking about? I mean, you know, when you compare the English language to the ancient tongues from the East, you know, we're talking this, this contrast between Eastern philosophy on marriage and Western philosophy, which I didn't even talk about Eastern, but we'll get down into that a little bit later. But um, when you're comparing Eastern culture to Western culture, uh, when you look at the ancient Egyptian tongue, ancient tongues like the Egyptian tongue and, and ancient Hebrew, I'm not talking about this modern stuff that's you know mixed in with some Yiddish or whatever and has has bleed has bled in some some Western abstract thought. Okay, I'm talking about the Eastern languages where everything was concrete. Um, when you talk about the pictographic languages, people could look at uh, uh, 
writings that were pictographic and get the meaning of what was being said. You know what I mean? So you, you take, for example, um, an Eastern versus Western principle. Let's take the Western uh, principle of danger. Uh, let's say you got some people that are hiking somewhere in the wilderness uh, or they're over in the Serengeti or whatever and they want to go on a hike. And somebody says to them, hey man, be careful once you cross over that stream over there and go about, you know, 200 meters into the bush. Yeah, there's, 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 it's dangerous. It's dangerous in there, man. So just be careful. It's dangerous. Be careful automatically. Be careful. It's dangerous. Automatically cast the spirit of fear upon you because danger is an abstract con concept. It's not, it's not concrete. It's abstract like danger. What does that mean? What's dangerous? Now, if I were to say that using an Eastern language, um, and I'm not going to use the language, of course, but if I were to say that in the Eastern way of thought, I would say, hey, you know, watch out when you cross over that stream over there and go 200 meters into the woods because there's some lions over there that haven't eaten in a long time, okay? So now all of a sudden you have a knowledge of what's over there that could cause you bodily harm. So if you're going to proceed to go anyway, you're going to take with you some type of protection, some type of weapon or something to uh, repel an attack from a lion if he should if he should get up on you. You know you gotta go through there, but now all of a sudden you don't have this abstract principle of danger. You have a concrete principle of a hungry lion. You know a hungry lion might attack you. You might be food to a hungry lion. So you're either going to avoid going into that area where that hungry lion is, or you're gonna take some piece of weaponry, weaponry to protect yourself. But now you're not going in with the spirit of fear. You're going in with knowledge of what exactly is over there that could cause you harm. And what type of apparatus do I need to repel a lion? If I know I have something in my hands that can repel a lion and I'm watchful, maybe I'll take a guide with me that's used to going through there and he can watch for that lion or whatever. Now I know how to get through there safely and get back. That's what I mean by um, comparing concrete versus abstract. You're not casting the spell on somebody with a concrete principle because they know exactly what you're talking about. All right, so that's all I wanted to say. Now, why did I say that? I said that because marriage is pretty much an idea, if you think about it. It's an agreement entered into that is based upon a fleeting emotion, like, you know, uh, 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 like, like love, you know what I mean? Love, not like, love. Love is a fleeting emotion, but it's also abstract. It, it's, it's, you can't touch love, all right? Love in and of itself is an abstract concept. Now let's let's take love and, and compare that to like, for example. So we don't know what love is. They're like in the ancient tongues, what was the word for love? Love is like a Western, that's a European concept. It is, it's, it, it's uh, you get married, oh, I'm in love with that person. What, what is like, what does that really mean? Like in the East or in the West rather, when we talk about love, we're talking about a feeling that you have, you know, a feeling that that is, is an emotion, it's fleeting. What do I mean by it's fleeting? Well, you know what? Anybody who's ever dated in high school or college or whatever, or even if you're in a dating scene as an adult, you meet somebody, they say something to you, they talk to you in a way that gives you a physical reaction um, or a physical energetic reaction and you're feeling, you're feeling this energy, you're feeling this chemistry, whatever. People call that love, but it's actually like, and there's a difference. See, let's talk about, for, for example, um, um, like versus love. Like people, when people say they're falling in love, what they really are falling into is like. Why do I say that? Love, and let's take away the whole abstract nature of it. Let, let, let's go scripture for just a minute. Y'all know I break down scripture on, on my channel. Let's go scripture for just a minute. In the scripture, the Most High commands us to love. He doesn't tell us what to like. He doesn't say, um, I'm commanding you to like this. He knows that you have no control over what you like. What you like is, is it, it could be genetically predisposed. It could be something that uh, is, is genes that's passed down from your mother. Your mother might like the way that, um, she might like the way that lemon pound cake tastes. And guess what? You might like the way that lemon pound cake tastes because when you're a kid, your mom says, ooh, this is good. And your tongue has an affinity of, for sugar because you got that from your mother because you got her genes in you or your dad's or whomever. So you're eating this piece of, of, of pound cake. So now you like pound cake. Let me give you another example. Growing up, I hated lima beans. I still hate lima beans. You cannot make me like lima beans. When they hit my mouth, I'm like, ugh, I can't, I, I won't do lima beans. I mean, I would have to be like in a situation where there was no other food available for me to 
eat lima beans. And I would eat them not liking them, but understanding this is a requirement for my <laughs> getting the calories I need to continue on, okay? Um, but love, he commanded you to love because love is something that you actually do have control over. Now watch, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna show you the difference between the abstract principle of love and the concrete principle. What is love? Uh, love is, oh, I'm in love with a person. No, you're not. No, you're not. Because love is something that you actually have control over, like you don't have control over. So you can be, this is why people fall in and out of love. They, they get it confused, okay? We're talking about, we're talking about marriage, okay, being a joke. I'm, I'm, stay with me now. Um, like versus love. He commanded you to love. The Most High commanded you to love because he knows that you, that is a choice. Love is a choice. So therefore, if love is a choice, then love is something I show with action. Now, this abstract theory of love is not an action, it's a feeling. What's a feeling? A feeling is an emotion. You wake up feeling high today, you could wake up feeling low tomorrow. You could be feeling great, like, oh, I can conquer the world. Today, tomorrow, you could be like, man, I don't even know why I'm here, man. You know what I mean? That's fleeting. Those are fleeting emotions. So, how do you show love? You, you how, how do you love somebody? You show it. Hey, you know what? You see somebody down in their luck. Hey, man, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? Hey, you know what? Oh man, I'm man, I'm I'm down here in this heat all day, man. I'm starving. Been out here holding this sign. Won't nobody drop me no food. They won't give me no money, whatever. All right, man, listen, man. Maybe I won't give you any money, but okay, if you tell me you're hungry, wait right here. I'll be right back. Boom. I go to the corner store, whatever, get a couple of hot dogs, bag of chips, you know, a, a bottle of water, whatever this guy needs to, 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 to get rid of his hunger. That's an act of love. Love is an act. Okay, so that is something concrete because now you have done an action. You have done an action. So when people say they're getting married for love, they really don't know what they're talking about. They're getting married for like. So therefore, that is why, that's the number one reason why, why uh, 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 marriage is a joke. You got this, this spell cast on you about what marriage is and what it should be about. And I'll be getting into that in just a second. But you know, you don't understand this principle of like versus love. You can't make yourself like something, okay? You can't really make yourself hate something. If you if it's something you like, if you like if you like eating salad, you can't make yourself hate eating salad. Yeah, you can eat salad till you're full and you don't want it anymore, but you don't hate salad, you actually like it, okay? Um look, I grew up in New York. I'm a pizza dude. I love <laughs> I like pizza, okay? I like pizza. You can't make me not like pizza unless it was prepared by somebody that didn't have that culinary skill, then I won't like it. See the difference though? See, one pizza I like, another one I don't. Why do you like this pizza, Matt? Because he put the right blend of the spices in with, and he used fresh tomatoes. That, that He went out back, he picked, pulled tomatoes from the garden, washed them, and made his sauce from right out the garden. Why don't you like that pizza, Matt? Well, because that came from a can of tomato sauce that was sitting in the factory for a year, and they mixed in too much tomato paste that is really acidic, and I eat it, I get heartburn. The cheese is like, processed, uh, you know, half skin, whatever. This guy over here uses nothing but whole, whole milk, mozzarella, whatever, boom. So he uses fresh basil, this guy uses irradiated basil out of a jar, whatever. This pizza I like, that pizza I don't like. You see what I'm saying? But I'm somebody who will tell you I love pizza, right? No, I like pizza. See, what, see the difference? No, but if I, I love you, I'm gonna ask you what it is that I can do for you. That's me showing you love. You need a place to lay your head, uh, you and, your, you and your old lady just got into an argument. You need somebody to talk to. Yeah, I'm busy, but you call me. You say, I need somebody to talk to, man. I'm going to stop what I'm doing and go see about you. That's because I love you because you're my brother. So love is an action. That's the difference. And that's what people get marriage mixed up because they say they get married for love, but you don't get married for love. I don't need to get married to show you love, right? 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 I can like you without marrying you. I cannot like you and still show you love. Right, yo, man, I don't like that dude over there, man. Yo, man, hey, man, that dude, man, yo, he just fell down out there and scraped his knee. If I love him, I'm gonna go out there and look. Hey, man, look, let me, look, I'm a medic, I'm an army medic, I got an aid bag upstairs. I'll be right back, man. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna irrigate your wound, I'm gonna clean it, boom. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna dress it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some, you know, dressing on it, whatever, make sure, you know, you get some antibiotic, whatever on it, and then boom, I'm gonna help you up and say, hey, man, let me help you at least get to a chair. You know what, I don't like you, man. And you know what? That in turn might create a situation where this guy says, you know what, man, I know you don't like me, I know you ain't feeling me. But you didn't have to do that. You went out of your way, man. I really appreciate that. You know what? Because of his gratitude, that could change my whole heart space. And now I actually like this dude. 
but that had nothing to do with the love I showed her. Pay attention, all right? So, um, we just talked about people not falling in and out of love, but they fall in and out of light, okay? Uh, and we talked about the biblical commandment to love. Why did the Most High, or some of you call God, whatever, why did he command you to love? Because he knows it's a choice. And if you want love shown to you, if you want him to show you love, you gotta show love to your brother, all right? He ain't got to show you love. He said he, he loves you, but he ain't got to show it to you. He ain't got to show it to you. That's the difference. Love is a choice, right? Okay, so um, so now, how's marriage a joke when it comes to like versus love? People don't fall out of love. They choose to stop showing it. Why? Because they fall out of like. So people choose to stop showing love because they fell out of like. I don't love you anymore. They're being honest. They're not. They, what they're telling you is they're not choosing to show you any love because they don't like you. They, they liked you at one time, but maybe you did one or two things too many that they didn't like, and now they're telling you they don't like you. They can't stand to be in your space anymore. They don't like you for whatever reason. So now they're choosing not to show you love. All right. Uh, I'm not gonna do anything for you anymore because I don't like you. I don't love you. No, you're really saying I don't like you. Get out of my face. So that's a joke. All right. So marriage, number one reason why marriage is a joke is because it's a gigantic spell. All right, part two. Part two. That was part one. That was the number one reason why marriage is a joke, as we know it, okay? Now, the second reason why marriage is a joke is because people get married for the wrong reasons. They get married for the wrong reasons. Like, okay, look, I have to include myself in that number. And this is this is a moment of transparency. Look, I'm, I'm gonna keep it 100 with y'all. I'm gonna be transparent. Wifey, if you're watching this, you know what? <laughs> the scriptures say we overcome through our testimony. I'm just keeping it 100. We've been married 27 years. Somebody asked me today, like one of my wife's homegirls came to the office today and uh, you know, I was talking trash like I always do, just, just being funny. And she's like, oh, you gonna get in trouble. I looked at her like, me, get in trouble? It's like, look, Mark, ain't nobody get me in trouble but me. I, I look, I ain't no such thing as me getting in trouble with her. I'm like, yeah, come on, man. Uh, I'm going to talk about that in a minute, too. But I, I look, I'm a king. How am I going to get in trouble? Like, what, for what I say? First of all, I'm not going to say anything that I don't want you to hear, that I don't want you to know I'm embarrassed about, whatever. But I'm not telling you, you're not going to know that. You're not going to know that. So anyway, but back to my point. Back to my point, all right? I have to include myself in the number of people who got married for the wrong reason. What's the wrong reason, Matt? Why'd you get married? I got married at 20, 21. I proposed at 20. I got married at 21. My wife is 22. Well, what was the wrong reason that you got married for, man? We're waiting. Look, both of us are trying to be good, good Christians, all right? Good Christians according to the scripture and not fornicate. So we got married so that we wouldn't feel guilty about, you know, oh, my, man, my, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we didn't want to feel guilty about that. So we got married. If I could go back... 27 years or 20, 28 really, because I got, we, you know, we were engaged for about, you know, almost a year, whatever. Um, and she would tell you the same thing. We were both, we would both laugh. We both laugh today at those kids that didn't know what they were doing. You know, 20, 22 and 21 getting married because, oh, you don't want to burn in hell. The Bible said it's better to marry than burn. Nobody ever even broke down what that scripture really means, all right? It's better to marry than burn. But it, I'm not going to do a lesson on that scripture. Look that up. Maybe I'll come back and do another separate episode on that. So that I, when I tell you I included myself in uh, the number of people who get, get married for the wrong reason, that was the wrong reason to get married. That was totally the wrong reason. So you might ask, well, if that was the wrong reason. How come you guys are still married 27 years later? Well, it's because even though I'm sitting here telling you that marriage is a joke, I understand the principle of what active love, love in action looks like. Love in action means. She understands the principle of what love in action looks like, what love in action means. She understands that there are days that she doesn't like me. There are things that I do that she doesn't like that makes her not like me. There are things that she does that I don't like that makes me not like her. But we both love each other as we were commanded to do. So we continue to work through our dislikes, which are temporary. Because remember, uh, 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 love being really disguided or, or like being masked as love is really a fleeting emotion. You like some today, you may not like it tomorrow. Just how it is, you know? I might like you today, I might not like you tomorrow, you know? You might come to work after eating a garlic bagel and drinking some coffee. 
I don't like to, I don't like you getting right here talking to me. You know what I mean? Not my wife. I'm talking about cats in the street that don't, you know. You might not like me. Look, hey, look. I might have I might have just eaten a chili dog and be like, forgot to go home and brush my teeth or chew some gum. Whatever, whatever. whatever. I'm just saying. You don't like me right then, but you still love me. You know what I mean? So anyway, let me get back to my point. So again, people get married for the wrong reasons. That's that's the reason number two that marriage is a joke. All right. Let me move on down. Marriage. Okay, so. Now that I've included myself in the number of people that get married for the wrong reason, I will tell you that there's a number, a myriad of other reasons why people get married, but a lot of them have to do with what we talked about in reason number one. You like, oh, I'm in love. No, you're in like, all right? You're feeling that, that newness. When that newness wears off, what do you have left? That's why some people are serial marriers and divorcers. They, 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 they're addicted to that dopamine, to that high serotonin, whatever. If I'm using the wrong scientific words, then y'all ding me in the comments, I don't care. You know what I'm talking about, all right? So people, they get addicted to that feeling, and so they trade out that person when that feeling wears off, and because they're chasing a feeling. They're chasing something that's fleeting. They're chasing a rainbow. You know, you haven't known anybody that caught the rainbow? Me either. Now, so, people get married for the wrong reasons. If, they, if, if, if you're saying these are the wrong reasons, Matt, then you can't have a wrong without a right, right? Okay, so why should people get married? Married. Marriage should be about, wait for it, kingdom building. Kingdom building, not some volatile emotion, all right? All right, kingdom building. What do you mean, Matt? Well, a kingdom is built upon, what is a kingdom? A kingdom is something that is built upon a singular king. Now, y'all, some of y'all gonna get triggered about what I'm about to say, but leave it in the comments. Leave it in the comments. All right, I'm not here to please, I'm, like I said in the beginning, this is an opinion piece that is based upon, or maybe I didn't say that, so if I didn't say it, I'm saying it now. Maybe I said that in my original take that I just deleted or whatever, I don't know. But, if I didn't say it, I'm gonna tell you now. This is an opinion piece based upon observations and based upon things that I do know, okay? Now, but still, this is, this is, this is classified as opinion, I'm not trying to spin this as fact. I'm giving you an opinion. Marriage is a joke. That's an opinion. That's never been proven as fact. Though some people might agree with me. Anyway, now, um, a kingdom is built upon a singular king with as many wives and offspring as he can physically and financially care for. All right? All right? Now, um, and, and why? I mean, it's for the glory of the creator, right? Didn't he say... Be fruitful, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. How are you gonna how are you gonna be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth when you are just espoused to one female who is out of the game for nine months out of the year? <laughs> you ain't gonna be doing a whole lot of kingdom building. But now guess what? If you impregnate one woman a day, then at the end of a full cycle, when you get back to Let's say you impregnate somebody on January 1st, and then, you know, you don't come back to her again until January 1st of the next year, all right? And then by the end of, by December 31st, the following year, you completed a full cycle or whatever, right? If you did that, that's 365 children in a year. Do that for 10 years. You got one man that's the father of 3,650 children. That's kingdom, that's a kingdom right there, all right? Not even that many, really. But 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 anyway, I, I digress, I digress. Um, now with as many wives and offspring as he can physically protect and, you know, through his labors or through his finances, that's a whole nother story because we know money didn't exist in the beginning, but that's a whole nother story. As he can physically protect and financially provide for. That, that's what a kingdom is. It's built upon a singular king, a singular king, okay? Now, a kingdom can be as small as a family, one man and one wife, with, you know, one or, one or more children, or it can be as large as a collection of families and tribes, you know, united under one righteous ruler. Now, when I say kingdom, I'm talking, and, and I say a king or ruler, righteousness is the, is the key, because if he's an unrighteous king, he's not gonna last for long. He's not gonna last for long. He's, <laughs> you know why? Let me, let me explain something. A king, first of all, only answers to the king of kings. He, a king answers to no one. When you're a king, your responsibility is to, not, well, not responsibility, who you answer to, the energy that you answer to when you're a king, which is the king sits at the top of a kingdom. And I don't care if that kingdom is a single household or if it's a whole land full of multiple households. When you're a king, you answer to no one 
but the king of kings. That's why he's called the king of kings. Why? Because he sets kings up, he removes one, he puts another in place. Look at the example of Saul and David. He allows one to be a king, he gets tired of him, but for whatever reason, he removes him, he allows another. You're not the king anymore. Somebody's taking your spot. So he's the king of kings. Y'all can agree with that or disagree with it. And it's, a, it's not about religion. This is about existence. You can say it's religion. It ain't got nothing to do with religion, okay? We know that there's a creative source for some of y'all that, 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 that are into spirituality, sans scripture, okay? He, he, he's, he's source, as some people like to say. He is source energy. And I'm not getting into the all the whole she versus he stuff, whatever. Listen, spiritual energy is a combination of masculine and feminine, uh, feminine energy. I'm not getting all into that other silly silliness that I'm seeing popping up in the world today. Where you not? I look, look. I'm not gonna get off track. Let me let me stay where I'm at. Let me stay where I'm at. Okay. Uh, kings are established by the Most High. So, uh, what what was I saying? I was just saying that a kingdom is built upon. You know, can be as small as a family with one 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 head. And then, you know, a wife or whatever. Or if he, if this is a wealthy king, he's got big land that he needs to control. He needs to make sure that he's got enough resources to, to, to take care of that land. Then boom. So now to wrap it up again, part two, what, what is what is the second reason that people get married? What is the second reason that marriage is a joke? People get married for the wrong reason. Now, what is the third reason that marriage is a joke, Matt? Marriage as practiced in Western societies emasculates men. Yes, I said that. Marriage as practiced in the West emasculates men. What are you talking about, Matt? All right, check this out. Women hope to meet the man of their dreams, right? But then they get him married. He, he walks them down the aisle, gives them a ring, whatever. It's all down on his knee. They, they might cry together, laugh together, whatever. Uh, Graph together, cry together. Uh, let me stop. Let me stop. I'm not going to do the whole... I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. Uh, anyway, you're all I need. Y'all know what I'm talking about. All right, all right, all right. Talking about, I'm not going to do Method because I'm, I'm not doing him any justice right now. But y'all know the song if you're old school like me. Anyway, <laughs> women hope to meet the man of their dreams. Then they get married and they start treating him like a boy who's under their care or their control. Start treating him like a little boy. What am I talking about? You know, they, they are. Oh, where you going? You can't go here. Uh, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Um, did you blah, 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 blah? Huh? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wasn't he just raised by his mother and father? Wasn't he a solo man when you met him? Isn't that what you attracted? Isn't that what attracted you to him, his masculinity? Why are you stripping of that and trying to turn him into a little boy and control him like he your child? And some of y'all women go as far as threatening him. I I've heard stories of, yo man, my wife be on. She be bucking up at me, really? A man, look here, man, or, or, or check this out, check this out. Hey, yo, yo, man, can you come out tonight, man? Yo, the fellas, yo, we going to the sports bar, man. We going to eat some wings. We going to watch the Knicks play, whatever. We going to cry when the Knicks lose, whatever. But we going out. Oh, man, let me check on my wife first and see. Huh? How about, hey, yo, babe, me and the fellas going to, uh, we going to the sports bar to watch the Knicks play. Um, the game come on at 7.30. I'll be home, but it probably be over by 9.30. I'll be home by 10. All right. You're doing the respectful thing. You're telling her where you're going to be at because... They don't need to be worried about you when you out. I mean, God, they could be worrying that you might, you know, something could happen to you, whatever, some accident, whatever. You need to do the respectful thing of telling where you're going. That's respect. That's love. I love you, so I don't want you worried about me. So I'm I, therefore I like you and love you. I care for you. I'm serving you. How am I serving you? I'm serving you by telling you where I'm gonna be. That's love. I'm showing you love. I want you to know where I am so you can rest your nerves and not worry about me. When I leave there, I'm come, I'll be right back home. I might call you and see if you need me to grab something from the store on my way home. All right. That's being a man, not, hey man, let me see, hey babe, uh, the fella said they going, huh? Uh, yeah? Oh man, she said I can't come, man, she, she cooked me something for dinner. How about, if you haven't started cooking already, don't make me anything, I'm going out. Or, if you did cook me something, I'm going to take that to work for lunch tomorrow to show you respect, but I'm going out with the fellas. Why didn't you call me before you started cooking and ask what I want for dinner? No, well, no, no, because a mother... When a mother is getting ready to prepare dinner for her family, she don't ask her son. She don't check for her son. Hey, dinner is at such and such, so I'm be home. See what I mean? That's what I'm talking about when I'm saying uh, marriage in Western societies emasculates men. Let me give you another example. Um, men, I got written down here, men oftentimes ask women to marry them, expecting them to take on 
or shoulder significant portions of the financial burden of maintaining and operating that kingdom, all right? That's, you're self-emasculating then, you're auto-emasculating. What do you mean, Matt? You, 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 you have, you have, you have stripped yourself of the manhood and then you get mad because she's at, she's treating you like a little boy because you need her to help you pay the finances. Now, I'm not saying life doesn't happen where you might get fired from your job and you might, you might need her to hold it down for, you know, uh, two, three, four months, maybe six months while you get back up on your feet. I'm not saying life doesn't happen. But what I'm saying is when you're going into a marriage with um, a, a, a woman as part of your financial plan, then you emasculate yourself. So you can't get mad for her treating you like a little boy. One thing my dad taught me when I was a little boy, he said, son, always have your own. He said, one day you're going to grow up, you're going to get out of this house. He said, be able to take care of yourself. Don't never require, don't never, don't ever, don't ever ask or, or expect anyone to help you do anything. A man gets his own. If you want it as a man, you got to get out there and get it. Don't ask nobody for nothing because if they tell you no, then you're doing without. Be a man. My dad used to drill that into our head. He said, my dad raised five boys and a, and, and a girl. He raised five boys. He used to drill that into our head. Be a man, son. Have your own. You need some money? Stop asking me for money. Stop asking me, Daddy, can I have some allowance? Here, you know what? I'm going to go buy a lawnmower. Y'all can read that story in my book, uh, From Fear to Faith, the Survivor Story. Okay? Hey, son, I'm going to go buy you a lawnmower, and then that way, I ain't got to ask you what you want money for. Oh, uh, Daddy, can I have some money so I can go to the arcade? I'm not giving you no more money to throw away Miss Pac-Man. All right? If you want to throw away money at Miss Pac-Man or Defender or Galaga or Centipede, then you go make your own money, and then you can do whatever you want to do with your money. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> as long provided that you're not trying to go over my rules in this house now when you leave this house after after you graduate high school then you do i can't tell you what to do but that was what being a man was about so when you at when you when you go when you make your your wife to be a part of your financial plan as far as your uh being able to take care of the household then in my opinion you're not being a full man i'm sorry fellas if that offends you if that triggers you if that rubs you the wrong way but but you're self-emasculating that okay so don't ask a woman to be your wife and then with the expectation that, oh man, I've seen dudes do it, man. Yo, man, oh man, she she's a doctor. I'm gonna see if I can, you know, put it on her, man, and you know, make her fall in love with me. And then, you know, I marry, I married a doctor. Really? Nah, nah, nah. Look, listen. Ask the woman. So, yo, in a nutshell, again, you married, you married your woman. You don't marry her career. All right. If you marry in her career, you're already messing up. You're emasculating yourself. Be a man. All right. If you feel like her career is too big for you, then don't don't waste that time. All right. All right. That's all. That's all on that. Now, now check this out. Speaking while while we're talking about her and her income, if she wants to earn an income, then fine. But it, it, that, I'm, and I'm not saying yo check this out. So I'm not saying that I um a, a woman shouldn't work or whatever like that. But I'm gonna tell you something. And this is a conversation I had with my spouse before we got married over 27 years ago. I said, listen, I want you to understand something. I, <laughs> even though I'm not making a lot of money on this job as an ER nurse tech, okay? Um, you know, and, and then I'm being a full-time student or whatever. I want you to know, and I was taking a full load. I was doing 12 hours going into night school after I got off work, whatever. That's another story for another day. But I explained to her, I said, let me explain something to you. I am not requiring you to work, all right? I'm not saying that you can't work. I'm not saying that you have to work. What I'm saying is, you do what you got to do, babe. If you don't want to work, I make enough to hold down all of this. I'm talking about the rent. At the time we were renting, of course. But uh, I, I, the rent, the, the 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 lights, utilities, the phone bill, cable, internet, whatever. I make enough and, and buy groceries, all right? It, it, it's going to be tight, but I make enough to, to handle all of that, all right? Now, um, you know, I was a reservist as well, so I, I had a little bit of side income coming in, but it wasn't it wasn't nothing elaborate, but I wanted her to know, if you need to take a break, if you wanna work fine, if you wanna take a break from work, if you wanna have children and not work, whatever you wanna do, I got it. Now, we ultimately didn't have children and um, not saying it, <laughs> anyway, I wanna get into that, that, that uh, anyway. You probably see the pain in my eyes. Read my book from Fear to Faith, The Survivor Story, and you'll understand why we don't have children. That's a story for another day. But anyway, that was part of the conversation. I said, look, if you want to have children and you don't want to work, you just want to raise the children, I, I got you 100%. I support whatever you want to do as my wife. I'm bringing you into the castle here. I got you 100, 100. You ain't got to worry about nothing. Whatever you want to do, 
go do what you got to do okay do do what do whatever makes you happy and i've always been that way with her always okay so um what i'm saying is if you and this is that isn't for everybody but what i'm saying is if, if you're old lady old lady i'm talking like i'm talking to the fellas ladies don't get triggered that's how we guys talk listen if if, if, if you if your old lady your wife whatever you want to call her however you want to refer to her if she wants to work then fine but if she's carrying and nursing the children as well as hoping to teach them to raise them up and teach them how to one day care for themselves and, and be an adult working should not working an external job should not be a requirement because that's that's a job in and of itself all right so that that is how you maintain and hold on to your masculinity and not allow marriage to emasculate you because it emasculates a lot of brothers moving on now this is the part that's gonna get some of y'all ladies triggered if you're watching this it is what it is stick with me okay um and that may be what i'm about to say may be essential me yeah you know what i'm not gonna do it i got another piece of work though that you may want to check out ladies it's called stuck in an elevator and uh, uh that's not just for the ladies it's for you too fellas anyway check that out this piece of, there'll be some links in the description box below this video now men wait for it are biologically wired to be cedars cedars seed errs and replenish the earth we're, we're we're biologically wired to seed and replenish and, and 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 check this out we can reproduce our entire lives right women they have a window women have a window like this to reproduce men okay so we we both get turned on at around the same age or right? adolescence or whatever puberty adolescence whatever you want to call it we are now able to either fertilize or be fertilized depending on if you're a man or a woman respectively but guess what? For a woman, that period lasts about three decades, all right? For a man, it lasts until the day he takes his last breath, all right? So, yet and still, so men are wired to be cedars and to replenish the earth. But women, y'all get married to a man and you expect him to match your fertility window. Okay, so let's talk about that for just a minute. If a man was supposed to match a woman's fertility window, then why did not the creator turn off our ability to fertilize women at around the same time? Right? Okay, but no. So you want to emasculate a man because you're like, okay, well, you can't fertilize anybody but me and your window's only three decades big from, and, and really technically, if you take into consideration the time that you might get married, if you get married in your 20s, then your window's about two decades. If you get married in your 30, 30s, you got about a one decade window. If you get married on in your 40s, then it's whatever happens, happens. But why, <laughs> why did the creator, why did the most high create us to seed our entire lives? And yet you're only being able to be fertilized for up to about, you know, three decades, you know, give a few, give or take some some years, you know, beyond that or whatever. That's a question to ask yourself. So this is this is the this is the reason, you know, this was I think I'm on my third reason here that, that marriage is a joke. Uh, marriage emasculates men. That's another way that marriage emasculates a man. So marriage, therefore, is a joke because you are emasculating a man by expecting him to not be a man. All right. All right. That, I know that. Listen, that hurts. You got comments, leave it in the comments below. We having a real conversation here. I'm a 27 year marriage veteran. And I'm telling you straight up, I don't care. I don't care. My wife I'm not gonna get mad at this. I mean, it's, listen, listen. My wife knows me. She knows. She's known me for three decades of my life. Okay, and I'm gonna be talking about that part coming up. All right. So, um, she knows me, and she knows I speak my mind. And listen, the whole purpose of this video and a lot of my work is to break these chains off of our minds because, again. We've been, we've been walking around under a spell. When I talk about we, not just the whole world, but I'm talking particularly, in particular, this man who by and large still doesn't know his, his uh, identity, so he calls himself black, because that's what he was taught to call himself, or he calls himself African-American, or he calls himself Afro-American, or, or he calls himself African or whatever, because that's what he was taught to, to call himself by his ancient conquerors, okay? And that's a whole nother story. I won't even get into that or how that happened or whatever. That's another story, all right? so. Um, listen, you can't call yourself a believer. For those of you watching this that are believers, you can't call yourself a believer and then act like the most high makes mistakes. 
he didn't make a mistake when he wired men to 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 to, to be fertilizers for their entire lives. He didn't make a mistake there. He did not make a mistake. So why are you trying to emasculate the man by expecting him to be something that he's not? This goes into being a little boy too. Oh, yeah. Don't you look at that. Listen, she fine. I'm not, I'm not ogling over. I'm not rolling up on her like, yo, ma, you want to be? And if I did, <laughs> not that I would. I mean, but anybody, listen, man, we just talked about that a minute ago. You a king. Listen, if you can take care of that, and you know what, as a side note, let me just address this, because I'm going to do a whole other video on polygyny and, and, and why forced monogamy. I don't have a problem with monogamy. I got a problem with forced monogamy, because again, that's a spell. You have cast a spell on a man telling him he can only have one wife for his entire life, and he might have the resources to take care of three or four, all right? And then on the flip side, if you're, if you're a woman, you know that it's more of y'all than it is men. That's not by accident. Now, you, you can get into semantics and talk about countries like China where there's more men than women. China did that to themselves. I ain't even talking about them. I'm talking about by and large on a, on a, on, well, I ain't even talking about on a global scale. Don't get me on that, okay? I ain't talking about on a worldwide scale. I'm talking about within our community, our kingdom, all right? Our kingdom, when I'm talking kingdom, I'm talking about those of us who still think that we're black or African American. I'm not, y'all seen some of, look, at, look through some of my other videos and y'all understand why I'm, I'm on that. But anyway, let me let me get off of that. Okay. Um, God, I just lost my train of thought. It don't matter. It probably wasn't important. But y'all, y'all talk to me. Leave, leave, leave some uh, leave, leave, leave your comments below in, in the comments, because we need to talk about this. Oh, I know what I'm saying. Um, who is another man to tell a man who has the ability to take care of many wives, if, if as many as he can afford? Who's another man to come in and tell you you can only do this? That's what I mean by forced monogamy. I ain't got a problem if, if, listen, if one woman is enough for you and 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 you happy as a man, I'm not talking to women, I'm talking to men right now. If one woman is enough for you, then great. You know, a jolly wally, whatever, have yourself a nice life. But if there's a man over here that he's got the, 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 the financial means and he's got the security means to take care of more than one woman, okay? And he can get two women that get along that actually like each other and they can work together toward for the good of the kingdom that he's trying to build that you all are trying to build? Who's another man to stop him? Who's another man to stop him? And you know what, let me do some math before I get off of this because I took you down the side street, all right? Let's say for example, you as an individual earn $100,000 a year, okay? Which ain't much money these days in, in America, I'm just keeping it 100. Well, let's say you as an, as an individual man, you, you earn $100,000 a year. Let's say your wife, one wife, also earns $100,000 a year. Now the two of you together earn $200,000 a year. But what if you had three more wives who also each earned $100,000 a year? Now guess what? You've got $500,000 annually coming underneath your household or your kingdom. So guess what? If you have five adults in there, one, one king and four princesses that all get along and work together for the good of some mission, which I'm gonna be talking about that in a minute too. But if y'all all get along, who is somebody else to come along and tell you you can't do that? Guess what? If you got, now I just gave you a lowball number of 100,000, what if you make 250,000? Now y'all owe y'all a million and a quarter to the good every year. Tell me, are you gonna have any, any mortgage debt? Are you gonna have any car loan debt? Are you gonna have any credit card debt? You're not gonna have any debt. You are now wealth building. That's what kingdom building is about. But they want you to keep these freaking mental chains on your mind and make you think, oh, you can only have a one-to-one. -one. Nah, that wasn't how our ancient ancestors did. And the reason why we're not rolling like that today is because we fell away from the proper instructions, okay? The proper instructions on how to operate. We got enticed to do some things that were introduced to us by some people who were jealous. I'm not even gonna get, you know what? This ain't, this ain't gonna be a scripture lesson. This ain't gonna be a scripture slash history lesson. Let me get off of that. But y'all see where I'm going. See? So, who wants to be working to pay debt all your life? Oh, wh why, woman? Well, because, oh, I only want him to have me. Guess what? If you understood men, you understand that there's two things that men actually get enough of. If, if Number one is food. He can't, it's, 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 it's impossible for him to overeat if he is mentally stable, okay? He eats enough, he eats a plate of food, he's satisfied. Guess what else he, if he eats a plate of food, my nephew might be watching, so y'all feel me. 
you only got, put, put it like this, you only got so many bullets in that gun per day, all right? So it ain't like you out here. Many, I mean, y'all can run circles around us in that department. I'm trying to keep it as clean as possible, but y'all feel me. Y'all can run circles around us in that department as far as having fun. We're only good, I mean, once you hit a certain age as a man, you know, and even you, even in your 20s, you're good to maybe three. Three's like a stretch sometimes. After two, you're like, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. You know, if you get three, you're really good. Like, you ain't you ain't no good after three, on average, on average, okay? So, y'all, a lot of y'all are like, okay, I'm gonna keep myself poor. I don't want a kingdom build. I'm gonna keep myself poor because I want him all in myself. And then, and then you got days where you're like, I ain't doing nothing with you. You got on my nerves. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Okay. Okay. All right. So you, so now he's supposed to just sit down in the corner like a little, like a little boy, like a good little boy because you told him no. Now you're trying to be his mother. This is what I was talking about. Emasculation. But let me get back on track here. Let me get back on track. I want y'all to think more about the finance part and, and, and put the physical part aside because you can't do that all day. You cannot do that all day. Anyway, that's a whole nother lesson. Let me get back on point here. Um, okay, we just talked about, uh, uh, um, now, talking about how the most high don't make mistakes, how he, how women virtually emasculate a man by marrying a man and then expecting him to match their biological clock. That's, that's, that's the wrong way to do it. We got to break these chains off our minds, okay? If we really want to excel and ascend, we got to break these chains off our mind. So, as a side note, People talk about, you know, they be, let, let's talk about cheating for a minute. People want to talk about cheating and adultery or whatever. Let's talk about that for a minute. On a side note, if men and women both understood the real meaning of adultery, which is sliding up in a woman that you have no, uh, I'm sorry, sliding up in another man's wife or concubine, that's adultery. Adultery, really, what adultery really is, is you going up in another man's wife or concubine. That's, that's, that's the real meaning of adultery, okay? So if men and women understood the real meaning of adultery and the real meaning of fornication, which fornication is really you going after or trying to, you know, chop a, a, a woman that you have no intention of taking care of, you violating the rules. That's fornication. Fornication ain't you, oh, I'm going over here, whatever. Nah. If, if, that's what you, if that's what you want to get involved with, then she needs to be your wife or she needs to be somebody that you're taking care of. People don't understand the biblical concepts of wives and concubines. Guess what? That concubine wasn't somebody he just kept over there in a tent so he could hit it when he wanted. She had a role in the kingdom. She just wasn't a wife. She had no, she, she wasn't going to bear children for him uh, or, or she wasn't going to, uh, she wasn't going to have any, any rights of, uh, of, uh, of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, of, uh, geez, not survivorship. It's kind of like rights of survivorship, but the word I'm looking for, inheritance. She wasn't gonna have any rights to any type of inheritance or something, unless he was really benevolent, like, hey, if something happened to me, you know, she's been good, she's been good for the kingdom, whatever, take care of her wifey. And she's like, okay, all right, we're gonna put something aside her, because she really has been a big help to me and a big help to you, you like her, whatever, boom. That, that was a concubine, that was something a little different. But what is fornication? Fornication is, is you going to go do the do with a woman that you got no intention of taking care of. So, you know, uh, 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 when they created this word called, called cheating, what it did was it it, 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 spat, it casts a spell, okay? Words like cheating wouldn't exist if we understood the real meaning of one, adultery, and two, fornication. Words like cheating wouldn't exist. You know what cheating is? Cheating is, like I said, cheating is, hey, you going over here, you know, dude A going to work, dude B sliding up, knocking on the door, trying to get with wifey while dude A at work. That's cheating. She cheated on her husband and he cheated with another man's wife. But a dude, a dude, and, and some of y'all don't want to hear that, but that's the biblical connotation of it for those of you that want to cherry pick and say, oh, you know what? Uh, yeah, I love God. I love the scripture. But then you, you want to, you don't want to eat it all. You don't want to eat everything on the plate. But anyway, look, I spent enough time on that. Let me move on to the fourth reason why marriage is a joke. Or marriage as we know it here in the West is a joke. Marriage in the West exists as a potential career move for the women, all right? Westernized women see a lot of them. Not all of y'all. Listen, I'm not, by no means am I putting everybody into a bucket because that is not fair if that's not what the person you are is, okay? So I'm not putting everybody in the same bucket. I'm talking about them who do. Some, let me say that, some 
Western women see marriage as a potential career move. Now, what do I mean by that? If it ain't obvious, what do you do? You allow a man to marry you or allow you, you agree to become a man's wife, all right? And, and remember what I said, you allow a man. I, you know, I saw Oprah Winfrey say some years ago, well, you know, um, it's, it's the women that chooses the man. It's not the other way around. You guys think it is, but we choose you guys. Listen, let me set the record straight, all right? If a man doesn't come and tap you on your shoulder, theoretically, and say, will you marry me? You gonna go your whole life unmarried. So who's choosing who here? But I'm not here to do the whole tit for tat. And, you know, he's, I just want to make that clear. Bro. This is why, for those of you that were wondering why I say you allow a man or you agree to become a man's wife or you allow a man to marry. That's why I said that. Now, Oprah, if you're watching this, talk titty, as my aunt used to say, be mad, I don't care. Now, you allow a man to marry you or you agree to become a man's wife. You have his children. You divorce him for reasons that are, you know, for, for, for any, first of all, if it's a physical, re if there's physical or mental abuse, then that's a reason to separate yourself from that man. I would tell my daughter the same thing if I had one, okay? Nobody, no woman should ever, first of all, no man should ever put his hands on a woman, okay, on some abuse-ish or whatever. Now, some of y'all might say, a man should never put a, listen, if a woman coming at you with a baseball bat, she ain't a woman no more, she a man, or she's a thing, deal with it, all right? <laughs> Let me just say that, all right? She coming at you with a bat and you ain't threatening her life and she trying, Nah, that's not a woman anymore. That's a thing. Deal with it. I said it. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> you already know this is filterless freestyle Friday. I take the filter off. Now, so let me let me get that. Let me put that out of the way. If there's no, in the absence of physical or mental abuse, all right, when a woman uh, agrees to marry a man, agrees to have a man marry her or whatever, she has his children, and then she divorces him for frivolous reasons or uh, or frivolous. So he's, I'm, I'm he. Whatever, he cheated on me or he lost his, well look, look, in some cultures, I ain't calling no names or nothing, in some cultures, some women divorce men because they lost their job or they divorce them because they uh, they got sick or something, they couldn't work anymore, or whatever, they just, they did, hey, I can't take care of him anymore, John, I want a divorce, John's not, John, you're not working, and when are you going to get a job, John, I want a divorce. It happens, it happens, but that's frivolous if you ask me. So anyway, you 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 do all of this stuff, you marry a man, man marries you, whatever, you have his children, and then you you decide to leave with half of his wealth. Like like for example, Tiger Woods and Elon Nordigren. Me and my boys used to talk about that all the time. Elon didn't sink one putt, she ain't win one masters, she ain't drive one of them things, uh however many yards uh, Tiger hits it off the tee or whatever, and because she got his cell phone. She get to leave with half of his stuff. All right, that was a career move. You can say it wasn't, but it ended up being a career move. Does she have to work after divorcing Tiger Woods? Never, okay? But what did he do? Did he hit her? Did he beat her? And don't say, don't call cheating mental abuse, okay? We just talked about what, what how, how cheating doesn't, if, if you know the real meaning of cheating, then you weren't cheated on, all right? All right, so don't get mad. Don't get me. I look. I feel the energy already through the camera, and this is not even live. This is re, this is pre-recorded. I already, <laughs> my spirit is already going into the future and feeling some of y'all energy here in the present. All right. Don't get mad. It is what it is. All right. She had no right to leave with his what you call it because he. Listen, that's something y'all could work out, Tiger. What is it? What is it, Tiger? I mean, come on, man. What is it, Tiger? Like really, what is it? What is it? Do you want another wife? I don't want you running around here with 500 women. Do you want another wife? Okay, you want a concubine, then bring her into the house. I'm gonna meet her. Me and her gonna work together. We're gonna do something. All right. You ain't gonna be running around here in the street acting like a little, like a like a like a retard, potentially risking my life for something that you're picking up from somebody. I get it. There's a way to do things. There's a fair listen, fair is fair. I'm not here. I'm not here. I want y'all to paint me as something I'm not, all right? I'm trying to get things back in order because obviously it ain't working. I mean, over here in America, America though, is the divorce rate in Western countries way higher than Eastern countries? And y'all can come back and say, well, the women in Eastern countries, listen, a lot of them women, listen, man, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not going, I'm not going to get pulled down into that. Let's keep it high. Um, so anyway, she can, she can marry a man, career move. She can marry a man, leave with half of his stuff on some frivolity, all right? And she didn't, this is stuff that he accumulated on his own, all right? This is accumulated of, on, of his own merit, all right? It didn't work that way in the old world, and it shouldn't today. In the old world, if a man married a woman, if she left, and I'm talking about the righteous countries, I ain't even talking about 
some of these countries where they do terrible things. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the ancient Israelites, all right? The ancient Israelites, listen, because a lot of the world's ways of doing things today are based upon the ancient text that got restructured into the Bible in 66 books. And, but anyway, that, I'm, I'm getting off track there. I'm getting off track. So a lot of what the world bases its culture on today is, is, is scripture that came out of ancient Israel, okay? Um, and African culture, by the way. Just wanted to plug that. African culture, a melanated culture. Just wanted to plug that, by the way. Don't get triggered. It is what it is, and it's truth. Now, we won't, we won't drop nothing but truth on this channel. You don't like it, don't watch, all right? Anyway, now, let me get back to what I was saying. Um, in, in ancient Israel, for example, if a woman left, she left with what she came with. If, if she was a business owner, she had her own field, she had her own thing, she was able to sell things that she created, crafts or whatever with her hand, then she left with her business too. I mean, she got her business, she got anything that she came there with or accumulated of her own, she left with if she wanted to leave. But she wasn't coming up in the cut and taking, leaving and taking that half a man stuff with him. That stuff didn't fly back then. They didn't have an infrastructure in place to allow that to happen, okay? So, that why is that happening today? But that's the fourth reason why marriage is a joke, because it's a career move for some women. A joke, all right? Marriage is practiced here. Now, the fifth and final reason that I have listed for marriage being a joke is that when it comes to marriage, both men and women are spellbound with regards to this erroneous thinking that marriage and relationship are synonymous. They are not. They are not, all right? Let me get in a little bit tighter here. Let me, I want y'all to understand what I'm saying here. Marriage and relationship are not synonymous. A lot of people mess that up, all right? Let me see. Let me let me give you my example of me and my wife being married for 27 years, right? Okay? Our relationship in this life, and that's a story for another day too, because some of y'all ain't ready for that eternal soul energy conversation, but this ain't the first time we've been here in this earth, and this ain't the first time I've known her. Obviously, I've, I've, that's too much. We ain't gonna talk about that right now. We'll leave that for another day. Our relationship is presently 31 years old. We've been married for 27 years, but our relationship in this life is 31 years old, all right? Now, if God forbid uh, our marriage should end a day after my posting this video, that in no way ends our relationship. What do you mean, Matt? A relationship is born when people meet and spend any significant amount of time together, all right? That relationship therefore never ends, okay? It is either active or dormant. A relationship is active or dormant. Just because I'm married to you uh, 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 today and then tomorrow we're not married anymore, that doesn't make our relationship go poof. You might not talk to me for 10 years, but that doesn't mean you don't know me. 10 years later, I might bump into you in the mall. Hey, how you doing? Hey, listen, how are you? Oh, this is how it's going. Hey, how's your life right now? Oh, well, blah, blah, blah. Oh, how's your life right now? Oh, well, blah, blah, blah. Hey, well, you know what? We were great friends at one time. You know, I know our marriage ended. You want to go out and just grab some dinner and just chat? I mean, I'm on my way to blah, blah, blah. But do you want to go out and chat? She has to make the decision. I, eh, I probably don't want to do that. Or, you know what? I'm, I'm free. Why not? Guess what? Now, all of a sudden, is that a new relationship? No, it's not. Your relationship just went from a dormant stage, from an active stage to a dormant stage, then back to an active stage, all right? In a single instant, any relationship can go dormant. And in a single instant, that relationship can be reactivated or go active if it's fresh, okay? So, you know what else? People seem to think that the act of destroying the non-energetic instrument of marriage, what am I talking about? A marriage certificate. They seem to think that destroying the non-energetic instrument of marriage destroys the relationship and it does it okay you're always going to know that other person all right you're always going to know that other person that you spend significant time with so therefore you'll always have a relationship with that person whether it's active or dormant good or bad you always have a relate once you have a relationship with someone you always have a relationship it is just the status that changes either you're act in an active relationship or you're in a dormant relationship but there's no such thing as, I knew him once, I don't know. No, it's just that, you know what, yeah, that was my husband, I don't talk to him anymore. Or yeah, that was my wife, I don't talk to her anymore. But you know what, anything could happen where y'all are talking to each other again, and you might start spending significant time together again. It happens. You see people get divorced, they stay separated, they stay divorced for 15, 20 years, and they come back and they remarry. Is that a new relationship? No. You just reactivate it, all right? Now, so that was the last reason why marriage is a joke. People seem to think that uh, tearing up the marriage contract and splitting the assets means that the relationship is over. No, the relationship just goes dormant because now you're mad at each other and you don't want to talk to each other. Now you don't like each other. 
So you think that means because I don't like you, I don't love you. Love is a love is an action word. Like is is passive. You can't you can't make yourself like something. You can't make yourself hate something. If you're telling yourself, oh, you know what? Don't make me hate you. Whatever, man. You they, they, just get out of here with that. All right, all right. You you just know you either like you. you they did something that caused you to uh, uncontrollably not like them anymore. So that's all hated. Whatever, whatever. Get out of here with that. Actually, hate is active too because you ain't got to show hatred to somebody. You you don't have to show hatred to somebody you don't like. Okay. Anyway, let me move on now. So, Matt, if marriage is a joke, then what? All right. How do we fix that apparent problem, Mr. Problem Solver? How do you fix that apparent problem? All right. Now let me let me let me intro this, and then I'm gonna give you the six steps to how you fix that, and then how you fix this broken system or this broken understanding of what marriage is, which is a joke. All right. How do we fix it? How do we get it out of joke status to something that's solid? All right. First of all, understand this, and this isn't step one, but this is I got, I got about six steps in here, and I'm gonna wrap this up. First off, under the heavens, a wedding or rings and a certificate of marriage are not requirements for a man to take on a wife. Those have never been requirements. That's something man-made. Oh, you need a marriage certificate. You gotta go down to the courthouse and get a marriage certificate if you want to. If you want this woman to be your, your wife. Bull. Yeah, bull. My nephew's watching, sorry. Okay, all right? None of that's ever been, you don't have to have a wedding. You don't need a marriage certificate. You don't need rings or whatever, exchange rings to take a wife or for a wife to have a husband, all right? What is a what, wife, female, land, husband, husbandman, one who takes care of land, one who cultivates it, one who plants seeds and harvests the fruit that was born from the seeds growing. That's what a husbandman is. Go look it up. Husbandman, he takes care of land. Wife, that's feminine energy. Land is feminine energy. You put seed in it, you drop seed in it, things grow. That husband takes care of that land. That land cannot take care of itself per se. Somebody's got to come and pull them weeds. Somebody's got to come and, and and keep the pest off that fruit. Somebody's got to make sure that fruit is is, is is safely, and then somebody's got to make sure that fruit is safely removed and placed somewhere else, all right? It's a synergy. This stuff happens in nature, all right? So now, what's step one, Matt? How do we fix this thing? Number one, you garner enough wealth and resources to take care of yourself first, all right? No man should ever, ever uh, uh, factor a partner into his security plans, all right? Be able to take care of yourself. That's the essence of manhood. I talked about that. I talked about how my dad raised us. I won't beat that one. I won't beat that horse anymore, okay? Number one, step one, for the men. I'm talking to the men. And women too, to a degree, but 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 uh, but but for a man, I'm talking, this is, this is a male-centric video. Number one, garner enough wealth and resources to take care of yourself first. Don't factor a woman into your into your financial plan. If she, if you need her, to, to to help support her, then uh, you ain't ready. You're not ready, all right? Sorry if that offends you. Number two, seek a woman or women, if that's what you wanna do with your life, to bear children for the continuity of your kingdom long after you are gone from this iteration of yourself, all right? All right? So, seek a woman for you, you, I mean, you only marry one at a time anyway. I mean, if you went to the religion, you only marry one at a time anyway. Seek a woman that's gonna help you uh, uh, bear children for the continuity of your kingdom. If you want a bigger kingdom, then guess what? You're gonna need more than one wife, period, all right? You, you, the smart smart money is is, 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 is finding and, and, and bringing, you know, as many women as you can afford to take care of under your, your roof, roof or roofs. I mean, if you wanna be, you know, hey, you know what, I'm gonna take care of this one over here across town, whatever, boom, whatever, or I got to, whatever. How do you do that? And listen, don't act like, don't act like our grandfathers didn't do that. They just weren't called wives, but don't act like some of y'all know you, you had uncles and grandfathers that had two families and you met your other cousins or whatever, or your, your other siblings at the family reunion, okay? Or you met them at the funeral or at the wedding, whatever. So let's keep that 100. This, this thing ain't new. It's just that the mental change have, have, have been placed on the heads of the people to, for whom they were designed to keep from them building a kingdom after theirs was destroyed 1,951 years ago. Story for another day, look that up. Look up what year it was 1,951 years ago and find out what significant event happened then, all right? Don't get triggered by that. It's fact, it's history, peace. Um, now, number three. So number two is seek a woman or women with whom to you wanna bear children for the continuity of your kingdom based on whatever your plan is for having a kingdom. Number three, rather than a marriage certificate, create a trust. Create a trust that leaves an inheritance for your wife or wives 
or your husband, if you if you got a home, if you own a business too, you want to leave a continuity plan, whatever, you don't need a marriage certificate for that. You can do that with a trust. You don't need a marriage certificate. Who can tell you what to do with a trust, a legal document that you have drafted by an attorney and you put your money behind it or whatever? Who can tell you what to do with that? Ain't no law established that says you can't create a trust. So do that with a trust, all right? The leave, leave, create a trust that leaves an inheritance for you, your wife, or your husband, or your wives, and your children, all right? So that, 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 that dismisses the need for a marriage certificate, which is a joke, all right? Number four, it's an incorporation. Well, I'll talk about, listen, when, 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 when five years ago, when my in-laws uh, passed away, um, within four months of each other, that is the first time me, I'm sorry, four weeks, not four months, my in-laws passed away five years in 2016, uh, my mother-in-law and father-in-law passed away within four weeks of each other. And the mad scramble that my wife, her brother, and, and me helping however I could had to, had to undertake to figure out all of this stuff. That is when we then realized that, you know what? This whole marriage thing is like dissolving and resolving a business that dissolved. It's, it's like, okay, somebody passes away, they didn't have uh, uh, certain uh, estate plans in place. So now we gotta figure out what to do with this corporation that is now dissolved due to the demise of the uh, parties to that corporation. It's a joke, man. I'm All right, so that was uh, step number four. Listen, uh, I mean, that was step number three, right? We're talking about trust and uh, you know why that's important. So now let's finish this up. Step four of the five steps, or really, uh, well, five, I got six here, whatever. You'll see when I get to the end. Step four, what's the next step, Matt? Get together with your wives and build a, or wife, wives, whatever. When I say wives, I'm just talking, you know, some of, for some of you it's gonna be singular, for some of you it's gonna be plural, okay? Get together with your wives and build a joint plan or partnership, et cetera, for whatever property ownership and business goals you decide that you want to undertake. Make certain that the husband and wife are equal partners in ownership and create roles, in other words, who does what, and then stick to the plan and crush that crush it crush it that's that so that's the next step all right get together with that and listen build a plan plan first and then execute plan execute plan execute adjust i got a whole nother thing i'm working on a whole nother project i'm working on in that alone and I'll, I'll show you how that applies how i've applied that to my life how it has applied whatever i got a whole nother project I, I'll, I'll give it y'all on that later now step five this one's important there's a scripture, in fact, for this. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. When he gets older, he won't depart from it. So that's step five. Once you got that plan and you're crushing it, train the children. Train them. Train them on for the continuity of the kingdom. Train them, okay? Train them and leave them an inheritance, too. How do you leave them an inheritance? By crushing, by, by crushing step four. By crushing step four, doing what you got to do, putting something aside, leave them an inheritance. Part of that inheritance is them. So you got to train them. You got to train them. Listen, we built this kingdom. Y'all got to keep this thing going. I might have to come back through y'all. When it's time for y'all to go, I might have to come back through y'all. So listen, I might, may not. It, it, listen, this whole soul group, soul tribe thing is different. Uh, listen, y'all can go look that stuff up. Look up soul contracts. Uh, uh, there's some great videos out there on it. Um, I won't even list them below because there's a lot of people that have put out videos. Look up soul contracts. You'll understand what I'm talking about. But I'm just saying, you may come back through your, your previous line. This is why I'm, I'm big on trying to live righteously and trying to do the right thing and trying to always knock out everything. My mother used to teach us this all the time. She teaches it now to my to her grandson, my nephew. She says, listen, always leave a place better than the way you found it, all right? If you enter into a relationship, try to try to help build that relationship, build that other person up, and, 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 and hopefully you can leave their life in, a, in such a way that at least you didn't mess it up. If, you, if the least you can do is not mess it up, that's fine. But if you can help enhance that person, place, or thing such that it is better than it was then when you encountered it, then you have done your reasonable service. That, that My mother was big on that, or uh, is big on that, okay? So, train up that child and leave an inheritance, all right? And then after that, the last step is enjoy your life. That's it. So those are the five steps. You said, Matt, okay, you say marriage is a joke. How did you... How, how, if it's a joke, so what are we gonna do to correct it? Let's review. Step one, garner enough wealth and resources to take care of yourself first, all right? Step two, seek a woman or, 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 or partners or whatever to whom 
with whom you're going to bear children for the continuity of your kingdom. So whatever you plan, whatever plan you got for your kingdom, once you are established by yourself, you want you want to grow that kingdom or you want to make sure it continues on, then you got to have seed. You got to leave seed. OK, how are you going to do that? How big how big do, does that need to be? What does that look like? All right. What, whatever your plan is as that righteous king. All right. Now, step three, rather than a marriage certificate or walk me down the aisle, let's go to the courthouse. Screw all of that, man. That's the that's really the biggest part of the joke. The biggest part of the joke is this whole notion that you have to follow these man-made rules to take a wife. All right. Do you have to follow these man-made rules? If you're a wife and a man approaches you and says he wants to be your husband, you got to follow all of these man-made rules, rules that you didn't create yourself, rules that someone created. Uh, Listen, if you if you are my tribe, you know what I'm talking about. You came to this land and changed, or you were here already and you were conquered and then put into chains in the in the same situation as your remote cousins that came across on the ships. All right, you put in the same situation, so you're under the rulership in a system that somebody created <laughs> that don't really work for them either. <laughs> and they let's look, look, let's call a thing a thing. That, 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 listen, that doesn't work for them either. There was a whole nother video. I was trying to find it. A friend of mine uh, sent me a uh, shout out to you, Myron, if you're watching this. A uh, friend of mine, Myron, he sent me this TikTok about a guy who broke down uh, when monogamy was introduced in the world, when forced monogamy was introduced in the world and had everything to do with uh, uh, the Catholic Church, believe it or not. This, according to this guy's study, his research, whatever. I don't have that. I wish I had it. I'd add it to this video, but I cannot find that clip for, for whatever. And I'm not, I ain't worried about it. But anyway. Um, listen, let's call a thing a thing. That thing that, that does not work for those who conquered the uh, uh, indigenous peoples that lived here, whose distant cousins they brought across on the slave ship, all right, and put them in chains and put all of us into the same situation. It didn't work for them. So how in the world you expect it to work for you? And that ain't the ways of your people, your ancestors. That ain't the ways that they did it, all right? All right? They, you know, polygyny is still practiced in, in some remote places of the world. But it's like everywhere the forced monogamy came in, you started having broken homes. Broken homes, broken families. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So uh, that's that, that's uh, that's step three. You don't need a marriage, marriage certificate. Screw that, all right? Step four, plan. Step four is plan. Plan, plan, plan with your kingdom. Plan with your the king. Plan, sit down with your princesses. Create that plan, all right? And then step five, train those children. And then step six, enjoy life. Enjoy life, okay? Step step four is important. Have that plan, crush it, okay? Don't don't just plan and not execute. Plan then execute. And then step five, train those children, leave an inheritance for them, and then enjoy life. Listen, this is this is your favorite storyteller, Matt T. Talbert. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, uh, leave a comment below, and uh, please consider subscribing if you have not hit the subscribe button yet. Give this video a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Turn on the notification bell. I'm gonna wrap this up. Listen, y'all. Peace. I enjoyed this. You got something to say? Again, leave it in the comments below, and check out the links in the description box. I'm a writer, so you can check out my work for *Fear the Faith of Survivor Story*, my number one selling book of all time, and now most recently *Stuck in an Ele Elevator*, which is my hottest book. Deals with a lot of themes that we see in the real world today. All right, check out my work. Check out some of my T-shirts. Writer's Life. You can get this at my website www.talkwitharts.com. And for uh, if you want to see what I write. Uh, things that you don't have to buy, check out my blog, www.mdtalker.com. Peace, y'all. I love you guys. Tell somebody you love them and mean it. How do you mean it? We talked about it already. You show them. Peace.